So look, I know I'm about a week late. Let me check my volume levels and go on with my life. I know I'm about a week late, but I, I'm sorry. This game is looking like it's going to be... It's looking like it's going to be great. And when I say great, I mean fucking fantastic. Fuck if you agree. I'm, no, I'm just joking. Those are sungers. But you guys know how I feel about Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that's the greatest game of all time. But, but, Techland is on the move because <laughs> i already feel like dying light is the greatest zombie game of all time hands down no arguing in my eyes of course get in the conversation let me know what you guys think i want to hear your opinions but i think dying light one is the greatest zombie game ever created thank you Techland. and now they are not holding back at all when it comes to dying light 2 now one of the things that we already know well I've known, but I've been away for a while. So one of the things that we know is that the protagonist is different. It's not Kyle Crane anymore. It's Aiden Caldwell. Right here, if you guys can see. And the game starts off, I'm assuming that it was a demo at E3. I don't know. I don't even know when E3 is. Eventually, I'm going to start going to these conventions. But right now, it's out of the question. I've got too much stuff going on. So Aiden Caldwell, as you guys see here, is in the bathroom he's not in real good shape and at this point in the lore of the game the virus has infected a lot of people even aiden but of course you know you guys have the the cure which is supposed to take that stuff away for i think a, a certain amount of time i think it's curex or something like that i can't really quite remember it's been a long time since i played dying light i was thinking about popping it in today but nah, i haven't even been playing my game that often so it's out of the question i don't know maybe i will but it's a, it's a different protagonist. I'm interested to see what they're going to do with this guy's personality, the character development. I want to see what the dude's going to look like, first off. I'm surprised they haven't decided to diversify the main character at some point. Uh, I want to see a black protagonist. Uh, I'm not racist, but it'll just be good to see them decide to you know display that level of diversity it's just it's just weird but whatever so we get we're exposed to the name of the protagonist we're also exposed to partially a bit of the setting and as you can see here it says the wilderness has crept into the unnamed european city where the game takes place along with much worse now I'm not entirely sure where Haran is. I don't know. Maybe it's in Europe, but obviously this one is in Europe as well. I'm insanely excited to see. Now, one of the things that I was a big fan of that I was exposed to early on, like within the first day of the release, is that this game is decision-based. Now, I think most games should be like this if you're going to be playing an RPG-ish type of game like this now i'm not saying that it's 100 percent rpg but you've got the tier levels and you know or the i'm sorry the weapon tiers and you know etc different stuff like that you got guns you know it, it goes from green to blue to orange purple and you know all that type of stuff rpg type of things so you got that and <laughs> I've always been a fan of the choice making. You're able to actually decide what the outcome of the game is. Then that gives the player a little bit more control. It makes them feel more involved. It makes them feel like more. That makes them feel more a part of the game. Like you're making this choice. The reason that this is happening. The reason that the city's on fire. The reason there is no water supply. The reason that we're out of Curex is because of the choices you made. I think that's fantastic, and they need to continue that trend in the video game world because it's just better like instead of it being a regular story mode like dying light dying light was fantastic but it was just a normal story mode a bit cliche a bit cliche but whatever we're not going to get into that i think they need to explore more in the video game world the decision based outcomes in video games because once again it just makes the player feel a little bit more involved more part of the game so We'll have to wait to see what they're going to do with that. Now, I can already tell that they're doing great things with this game. It looks great right here. This isn't even like an image that I saw. It just, it just looks fucking great. It just, it just looks really good. <laughs> the textures, the facial expressions, the clothing textures, look at the shine on the, the weapon. 
It looks like it's just complete bedlam mayhem going on here in this scene. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't watch any of the demos from E3, so we'll have to have to wait and see. Now, what gets me is like this thing right here. This is this is dope. This is just really dope. Now, what gets me is you scroll down a bit, and this is what I loved about Dying Light One. They did not stop no matter what. It's like Dude, the game's been out for five years. Let it go. No, no. Techland's like, look, we finna show y'all exactly how you supposed to do this. The rest of the developers. Because this is how you capture a fan base. I don't give a damn how old the game is. If it's got multiplayer, you need to figure out a way to captivate the fans and keep them wanting to play. And that's what Techland is doing here with these games because Dying Light 2, they I'm, I'm sorry, not Dying Light 2, but the first Dying Light, they continue to add new game modes for the multiplayer version. They continue to add new zombies. They continue to add an, an, like an entirely new story mode with, what is it, um, Dying Light... The, I forget the second version of the game, but you guys understand what I'm saying. They added an, an entirely new map. They gave you the ability to get in cars. They just it, they increased the want to play this game, and it was fantastic. I loved it. Like I'm like three years, four years in, and I'm like, why are they still adding things? And never in my life have I questioned why a developer has continued to add content for a game until Dying Light, and it's great. I mean, I'm 100% on board with this. Now, this is the kicker for me. This is why I love Techland, and they're becoming one of my favorite developers because of what they're doing with these games. Look at this here sentence right here. <laughs> Look at this here sentence right here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it for you boys. It's a neat illustration of how your choices can have a radical impact on the world. Techland are adamant that you'll only see 50% of the game on a normal playthrough, at least in terms of the story mode. That's great. I mean, I'm insanely excited in more ways than one. You know, when, when I see a developer continue a trend that they had in one game, bring it over into the sequel and they just go all in. Now, you can obviously see that they're going to add new versions of zombies by this picture right here. That's underneath this paragraph that I'm reading. Because I don't know if the cursor is showing. I need to change my OBS settings. Whatever. But you can clearly see that they're going to add new versions of zombies. Now, how they're going to find a new way to make an even creepier, more deadly zombie, I don't know. Because... Oh, you know what they could do? They can make it to where the volatiles that were only available at night are sometimes out in the daytime. Ooh, ooh, I'm excited. No, but honestly, really, I mean, like, if that threat is there, not 100% like 24 hours in game time, but every once in a while you may bump into a volatile that is ridiculously strong because he's found a way to survive in the daytime that would be great. That would be wonderful. Even if they make it a story, one of, like one of the missions, you've got to go and beat this volatile. He's not supposed to be out in the daytime, but he figured out a way to survive in the daylight. We need you to go and kill him, Aiden Caldwell. So get to it. Now, another thing that I was wishing for, I was considering this is a different city. It looks like it's much bigger and a bit more complex. There are many more, <clears throat> excuse me, Many more areas that you can actually enter. Or at least it looks like that way. It looks that way to me. So one of the things that I was wishing for was that they give you a set amount of safe house builds. Meaning that in one district, you can build a total of, let's just say four. You can build a total of four safe houses. And after that, in this district, you have to go and tear down one of the safe houses you build if you find another area that has a building you'd like to turn into a safe house, you cannot exceed the amount of safe houses, which is four in this area. Once you've made four safe houses, you've got to go and tear down a safe house somewhere else to actually build a safe house here. I think that's great because especially during the nighttime, you know, good night and good luck. You feel me? Like when nighttime comes, you need to have that access 
because the volatiles and I'm hoping that because it looks like this is a volatile here that we're looking at in this in this image but he looks a little more slim and he looks like he'll be a bit more nimble you know the volatiles were very nimble but they were really big beefy zombies this guy looks a little slim once again he could be a bit more agile than the regular volatiles but we'll have to wait and see what this guy is he looks um he looks menacing <laughs> But the fact that they tell you right away that you're only going to see 50% of Dying Light's content on a normal playthrough is phenomenal. Now, if I'm reading this correctly, I could be reading this wrong. Let's read it again. It's a neat illustration of how your choices can have a radical impact on the world. Techland are adamant that you'll only see 50% of the game on a normal playthrough. To me, that sounds like if you play the game on normal, you won't even get everything that Techland is offering for you. And I think that is just spectacular, dude. I think that's spectacular. Techland, you're making me big. Uh, you're making me a big fan. I'm excited. I don't know what the release date is. I don't think I've actually seen one quite yet, but we'll definitely have to wait and see when that release date is. But dude i'm i'm insanely excited about dying light 2 i can't wait and you guys definitely get in the conversation let me know what you think about dying light 2 i'll try to keep up with this game as much as possible considering this is probably going to be one of the most popular games i'm going to play on my on my channel uh i'm not going to be doing that much game content i want to save my content for when i know people are actually watching so for now you guys will get discussions and then we'll change it up a little later. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. Be sure to give the video a like, comment, and you know what else to do. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.